bless me now, my Savior, I come to Thee. Come, ye sinners, poor and needy, bruised and broken by the fall. Jesus, ready, stands to save you, full of pardoning love for all. He is able, He is able, He is willing, doubt no more. He is able, He is able, He is willing, doubt no more. Come Weak and wounded, sick and sore, Jesus ready stands to save you, full of pity, love and power. He is able, he is able, he is willing, doubt no more. He is able. He is willing, doubt no more. Saints and angels join in concert, sing the praises of the Lamb. While the blissful courts of heaven sweetly echo with His name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hear we now his love proclaim. 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 We are not afraid to follow where you lead, leaving what we So we'll go with you into the unknown. We are not afraid. We are not afraid to love the way you do, to serve with the same grace we receive from you. We are not afraid to look beyond ourselves and offer hope to those who cannot help themselves. We are not afraid. We are not afraid. We will be
Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Let us adore, Let us adore the ever-living God. The ever -living God. And render praise. And Set out the heavens, set out the heavens and establish the earth, and establish the earth, and whose glory, and whose glory is manifest throughout all the earth. He is our God. 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 There is no one else. He is our God. He is our God. He is our God. He is our God. There is no one else. I praise your name. I praise your name. Most high and awesome God. Most high and awesome God. And lift my hands. And lift my hands. Unto you. Unto you. You save my soul. You save my soul. On a rugged tree. On a rugged tree. Now I praise you. Now I praise you. And serve you, Lord, throughout eternity. He is our God. He is our God. He is our God. He is our God. There is no one else. He is our God. He is our God.
table and worship the Savior. Taste what forgiveness is for. His mercy will lead us, the grace of God feed us, making us hungry for more. His body was given for you and for me. Look on the cross and believe The bread has been broken Our eyes have been opened Oh, come, Lord, restore and renew Your word has been spoken So humbled and broken of you. The bread has been broken, and all those who know him believe without touching the scar. His death reconciled us, we live sanctified to become what we already are. To him who loves us and freed us to love, be glory and honor and praise. The bread has been broken. Our eyes have been opened. Oh, come, Lord, restore and renew. Your word has been spoken. So humbled and broken. of you the bread has been broken bread has been broken our eyes have been opened our eyes have been opened oh come lord restore and renew your word has been spoken word has been spoken so humbled and broken humbled and broken we do all in remembrance of you the bread has been broken. Hey, church family. Um, we're going to take communion together right now. And so if you have your communion supplies ready, uh, I wanted to share a passage with you from 1 Peter chapter 2. You know, when you think about what we're doing right now, uh, this is a sacred moment. And I'm so glad that we do it every week. Uh, it's our connection with God. It's very, very important. And, and listen to the words of Peter. I think, uh, I think this says a lot about what we're doing right now when we take communion together. 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning at verse 9. But you are a chosen people, talking about Christians, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. So what are we doing right now? You could probably describe it in a lot of different ways. But I think part of what we're doing is celebrating the fact that we belong to God. That's why Jesus came to earth. That's why he died on the cross. That's why God brought him back to life on the third day, so that we could belong. And I love how Peter puts it, once we were not, we weren't a people. We didn't belong to God. But now, because of Jesus, we do. You are somebody of great value because of what Jesus did on the cross and his resurrection. Let's celebrate that together now by taking the bread which represents his body. Let's pray together. 
Our Father in heaven, we love you. It's so wonderful that we belong to you. And right now, that is so real to us as we take the bread together. And we remember what Jesus did to buy us back, to create this relationship with you. We thank you, Jesus, for what you have done for us. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And with the cup, Jesus tells us that this represents the blood that was spilled at the cross for us. And what I love about the imagery is that I'm forgiven and so are you because of this blood. And so that gives us again the purpose we have in our lives. You know, in that passage that we read earlier, Peter said, you're a chosen people because of the blood. You are chosen to be forgiven. You're a royal priesthood. And so we declare the praises of God. And now let's pray before we drink from the cup together. Thank you again for all that you've done for us, Jesus. Father, thank you for sending your Son into this world. Holy Spirit, thank you for living within us. And as we commune together, even though we are in different parts of the city right now, and maybe different parts of the country and even parts of the world, we belong to you because we have been chosen through Jesus Christ. And we celebrate that in his name. Amen. Well, I know you agree with me. God is so good. And right now, I'm thinking about all the people who have just joined with me in taking of the bread and drinking from the cup and realizing that we're saved people, that we're going to heaven, that we belong because of what Jesus has done. I want you to know how much I love you, but more importantly, never ever forget how much God loves you. Standing on this mountain top, looking just how far we've come, knowing that for every step you were with us, kneeling on this battleground, seeing just how much you've done, knowing every victory was your power in us. Scars and struggles on the way, but with joy our hearts can say, yes, our hearts can say. Never once did we ever walk alone. Never once did you leave us on our own. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. Battleground, seeing just how much you've done, knowing every victory was your power in us. Scars and struggles on the way, but with joy our hearts can say, Yes, our hearts can say, Never once did we ever walk alone. on our own. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. You are faithful, God, you are faithful. Scars and struggles
can say Never once did we ever walk alone Carried by your constant grace Held within your perfect peace Never once did we ever walk alone Never once did we ever walk alone Never once did you leave us on our own You are faithful, God, you are faithful Evermore we are breathing in your grace Evermore we'll be breathing out your praise You are faithful, God, you are faithful You are faithful, God, you are faithful Standing on this mountain top Looking just how far we've come Knowing that for every step You were with us Good morning and hello Santa Road and church family. Whether you're watching this morning, Valentine's Day, or you're watching sometime in the future, I am so glad that you could join us today. It's probably not what you thought it was gonna be. I'm sure that the ice has affected you in some way. And if you're watching this sometime way in the future and you have no idea what we're talking about, here in the great set of Texas, in Oklahoma, and in other places in our country, we've had lots and lots of just freezing cold weather, weather we weren't counting on. So this morning, before I really get into the meat of what we're talking about, I wanna start us off with a simple thought. When things don't go your way, when things change last second, when your plans don't hold up the way you thought they were gonna be, God is still at work. And it may even be more obvious when that happens that he steps in and does something that you weren't expecting at all. But be thankful that you are at the mercy of God's leading. Follow him in the which in which way he wants you to go. Because this morning, uh, as long as you're watching this morning or maybe watching sometime in the future, you're probably seeing that things aren't going exactly the way you thought they would. I know for me, when I'm gonna be watching this, I'm not gonna even be in my own home. You see, uh, this weekend we found out that our heater went out, which is a wild time for that, that type of thing to happen. But I'll tell you already, a huge blessing that has come out of that. You see, the other day, uh, Brittany and I were trying to figure out what to do, and then I start getting bombarded with multiple families reaching out who just conversationally had heard about what was going on at our house and immediately texted us, are you okay? What can we do? Come stay with us. We have plenty of food. We have room for you to stay. Stay as long as you need to. Tell me what you need. Saturn Road, we have only been here less than a year. And we are already seeing the love, the welcoming spirit, uh, the tight, tight knitted family that you have here. And we are blessed to be counted among you. Like I said, today is Valentine's Day. And I, I bet you were walking in thinking we were gonna talk about something romantic or some beautiful love story in scripture. And in many ways we are, but probably not in the way you would think. Uh, last week, Jeff talked uh, to us about how Jesus is the door of the sheep. Today, we're, we're having almost a companion lesson. For in the same passage of scripture, Jesus has another I am statement. And as we work through these I am statements, we are discovering who Christ is. And so today, we come to this I am statement. I am the good shepherd. Let's go to God's word and see exactly what he says. So John 10, 11 through 18, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. 
Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. This is a really cool passage, and we're, we're really talking through this series of who Jesus is. Who does he say he is? And I think this morning, as we see that Jesus is the good shepherd, that places us in the role of the sheep. We are sheep. And so to better understand what the good shepherd is, you need to better understand Things about sheep. So here we go. Uh, I want to I want to tell you that this morning we're not going to discover everything there is to know about this passage. We're not. You could probably have a ten week sermon series on this passage and barely scratch the surface. Uh, but I, maybe it's from my teacher heritage. I, I want to come up with five fun facts about sheep that'll better help you understand what a sheep is and what makes them different. So, fun fact number one, there are well over a thousand different breeds of sheep in the world. The Hebridean and the Navajo Churro have the polyceret gene, and they can have two, four, or even six horns. <laughs> I thought that was really interesting. The Raka, or the Raka, uh, can have both male and female uh, with long spiral-shaped horns. Not just the male, but also the female. I, I can see how that could get really confusing if you're that type of sheep. So, fun fact number two. Sheep are smart until they aren't. And, and that may sound like a weird way to put it, but sheep can be brilliant. In fact, they can recognize up to 50 different faces for up to two years. I didn't know that about sheep. They can recognize 50 different faces for up to two years. But here's where this comes into play that they aren't always so smart. If a sheep that they would typically recognize has its wool sheared or cut, they might, may not even recognize their own mother, father, sister, or brother. And in fact, those sheep that look different than they normally do could be isolated and attacked and driven out of the flock because they are seen as predators. So sheep are smart until they're not. Uh, and that leads me into fun fact number three, which is that sheep need haircuts. I thought this was a really funny thing. In 2004, Shrek the Merino sheep was hidden in a cave for six years before he was found. When he was finally removed from the cave, they finally sheared the wool or gave him a haircut. 89 pounds of fleece, which can make up to 20 men's wool suits, came off of Shrek that day. One pound of wool can make 10 miles of yarn. And a typical sheep will make anywhere between 2 and 30 pounds of wool in a year. So sheep need haircuts. Fun fact number four. Sheep will fake it until they make it. What does that mean? You'll find that most sheep are prey to most predators. And in fact, sheep are constantly bombarded by attacks of different types of animals. Here's where it gets really interesting. If a sheep is injured uh, in some way, they will do everything possible to cloak or hide that injury. If they have a limp, they won't make it noticeable. If they have a giant tear in their stomach, they will cover themselves with mud. They will find different ways to cloak or hide their injuries because they don't want to be a target. They know that the, the predator will seek out the weakest of the flock and target them and kill them. So most sheep realize that and will fake that they are fine. Finally, fun fact number four about sheep. A cast sheep is a sheep that has fallen and can't get up. Now this describes a sheep that is either um, overweight, 
pregnant or hasn't had a haircut in a while. And in fact, this sheep literally cannot get up by itself. It will fall onto its back, and if not tipped back over by the shepherd or by another sheep or whatever, the sheep will die. But here's where it gets really interesting, is it's not because of malnutrition. They won't starve, they won't die of dehydration. They die because it drives them crazy. Their mental state becomes so haywire that they die. And so the sheep needs a shepherd to tip them back over. But here is a really, really cool tidbit of information. A sheep tipping over another sheep causes the sheep to fall back down. You see, sheep have really bad equilibrium. The shepherd knows when you tip over a sheep back onto its uh, onto its legs, you hold the sheep still. You remain there long enough for the sheep to ride itself mentally before they let go. So those are five fun facts about sheep. But in reality, those are five not so fun facts about us. Let me explain. So going back to our first fun fact that there are so many different types of sheep in the world. In fact, there are more than 7.6 billion people in the world. Beyond that, we are defined by only nine numbers in the Enneagram. I myself am an INFJ. We put people into boxes. Uh, Ecclesiastes 1, 9 and 10 says, what has been is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. Is there a thing of which it is said, see, this is new. It has been already in the ages before. As much as we like to think that there's no one that's ever understood anything that we're going through, what has been will be again. So fun fact number two about sheep is that sheep are smart until they're not. And in fact, people are quick to forget. In our Wednesday night series uh, for adult and teen summit groups, we're gonna be exploring the book of Judges. And the book of Judges really drives home this idea of how people are quick to forget. Looking at Judges chapter 3, verse 7, it says, And the people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of, their, of the Lord their God, and served the Baals and the Asheroth. You see, people are quick to forget. God's people in the book of Judges were very quick to forget. And in fact, went in this continual cycle. Serve God, things are good. They start to serve other gods, lowercase gods. They fall away. God allows them to be handed over to their enemies. They get persecuted. They go to war. Different things happen. And they cry out to God and say, please deliver us. God sends a judge. The judge delivers them. They return to God. They praise him. And then they fall back into this very vicious cycle. People are quick to forget. People need haircuts too. Let's say it a different way. People need pruning. I'm going to be careful here because I don't want to step on a future uh, sermon's toes. And I'm sorry, Jeff, for doing this. But let's look at John 15, verse 2. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. It's funny, when you take a child to get a haircut for the very first time, what typically happens? They get scared, they're worried, they see the scissors, they hear the buzzing of the razor. And it's interesting, the first time you shear a sheep, similar things happen. Most of us are not used to allowing the Good Shepherd to prune us, to give us those haircuts, to take away what doesn't need to be there. And in fact, when we even do things that we're supposed to be doing and we're bearing fruit, he still prunes. And we sit there and wonder, what are you doing, God? And yet he tells us here, it's so that we might bear more fruit. People need pruning. I told you that sheep will fake it till they make it, but the truth is people do that all the time. People fake it till they make it. James 5 verse 16 says, therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. But stop me if you've heard this before. 
Good morning, it's so good to see you. I'm so glad you're here this Sunday morning. I haven't seen you in weeks. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you for asking. How are you? We fake it till we make it. I told you at the beginning, our heater went out. I've talked to multiple people since that happened and I'm hesitant every time. I don't wanna paint a target on my back. I don't wanna look weak. I don't wanna share the things I struggle with. I don't wanna share the thorn in my side. I don't wanna share these moments because I see myself as prey to so many predators. I myself and people in general, we fake it until we make it. And finally, I told you that a cash sheet can't get up on its own. And in the same way, people can't do it on their own either. I wanna share with you a passage from Ecclesiastes as we did before. Uh, and it's funny because this passage is typically used at a wedding. But I want, I want you to think about it in the terms of our church family. Ecclesiastes 4, 9, and 10 says, Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, and has not another to lift him up. These, these, these two ideas that people fake it till they make it, and people can't do it on their own. How am I supposed to know that you've fallen if you don't tell me? And in the same way, how are you supposed to know when to lift me up if I don't tell you? We fake it till we make it. And we believe the lie that we can do it on our own. So now that you know a little bit more about sheep and in, in many ways know more about us, you realize that Jesus is the good shepherd because he is exactly what we need as sheep. So Jesus as the good shepherd... God knows you. Despite being one in 7.6 billion or however many people are on this planet, Jesus tells us in Luke 12, 6 and 7, are not five sparrows sold for two pennies and not one of them is forgotten before God? Why, even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not. You are of more value than many sparrows. I don't know about you, but... Uh, that's pretty romantic to me. On a Valentine's Day, when you feel like, who am I but one in a sea of people in a crowd? God says, despite being just a person in the crowd, I know the number of hairs on your head. He loves you regardless of how many people are on this planet. In the same way that we are quick to forget, God is quick to remind us. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. In the same way that God, uh, excuse me, that we need haircuts, God can use all of it. Romans 8 28 says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. So whether you are someone who is pruned constantly or the Merino, uh, the Merino sheep Shrek, who's been hiding in a cave for years and years, God can still use you. God knows our needs, in fact, before we even speak them. Whether or not we're faking it until we make it, hiding the different scars and wounds and things that have attacked us over time and whether or not we're willing to share it with others. God knows your need before you even speak it. Psalm 34 verse 18 says, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Before you even let him know the pain you feel, the things you struggle with, the wounds you felt over time, when you finally turn to him, you're going to figure out that he's been there all along. For God is near to the brokenhearted. He saves the crushed in spirit. And we have to remember that we cannot do it on our own. Uh, Psalm 40 verse 2 says, He draws me up from the pit of destruction, out of the miry bog, and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He's not just going to set you down on your feet and send you on your way. 
God is there to not only lift you up, but hold you tight, to hold on and make sure that your steps are secure. And I love this passage because it reminds me of where I came from, but it also secures me in where I'm going. I told you that a sheep that has fallen and can't get up is called a cast sheep. But 1 Peter 5, 7 says, cast all your anxiety on him, for he cares for you. I want to return now to John 10. And let's reread this passage that, that draws us in where Jesus tells us who he is. And let's look at it now with fresh eyes. You know a little bit more about sheep. You know a little bit more about us. And hopefully you know a little bit more about the good shepherd. John 10, 11 through 18 says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay down of my own accord and take it up again. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. So I want to leave you with a few ideas of who Jesus is because that's the purpose. That's the reason why we walk through this series of the I am statements. It's not just so that you'll hear it and think, oh, that was good, let's move on. It's said that you will know him and draw near to him. So the first things first, Jesus is good. You could chop this, this entire passage uh, up and just leave it at I am good and it would be enough. He is good. He is so good. And we live in a world today where that word has been watered down. In fact, sometimes when people ask us, how are you? We say, good, not great. Let's re recontextualize this word. Let us fully understand what it means. For Jesus is good. Jesus died for you. Now that may be old news to you, but think about what it really means. For we are constantly attacked. We are prey to many predators. This passage tells us that if we choose that judge's type way, where we seek after things that don't belong, we let the hired hand guard us, they're gonna leave us. They're gonna leave and, and leave us to our own devices. They're going to allow those predators in. But Jesus is willing to lay down his life and did for you. And with that in mind, Jesus is the best option. We live in a world where, where people seek after things that will fulfill them. Uh, my daughter is really into a, uh, a YouTube series now, but for, for a long time, the donut repair man would go around on tour and share uh, these, these funny stories that were almost like Barney and friends. Um, but he says, uh, life without Jesus is like a donut because there's a hole in the middle of your heart. You might try to fit other things in there and they might be a fit for a while, but soon the truth will wipe away your smile. But Jesus is the only thing that can fill that hole in the middle of your heart. He is the best option. And more than just being the best option, Jesus knows you. But we read in this passage that we will know him by his voice, but in reverse, 
he knows us fully. We seek as a Christian family, a church family, to know him more fully when he already knows us completely. He truly knows you, and more than just knows you, he included you. For we are in many ways the sheep that are not of that pen, and he brings us in anyways. Jesus includes you. And above all of that, Jesus is Lord. In fact, he is the Lord of lords. He is the King of kings. He is the Almighty. He is supreme. He is good. He is above all. He is Lord. But the question is, is he yours? Is he yours? Because at the end of the day, we're sheep. We're sheep. We're not the main character in this story. We are the sheep. Jesus is the shepherd, the good shepherd, that leaves the 99 to seek after the one. He is Lord, but is he yours? So with that, I want to close us in prayer, and I want to ask God to illuminate for you today. Are you allowing him to be the good shepherd for you? He is standing at the door, and in fact, he even is the door. He is ready to invite you in. He wants you to be a part of the flock. He wants to love you. He wants to protect you. He truly knows you. He is the best option for you because he is Lord. But I want you to really think about it today. Do the actions that you choose, do the words you speak, do the thoughts you have, Do they answer the question, is he yours? So with that in mind, I'll close this in prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you so much uh, for this day. God, regardless of who watches this or when they watch it, I pray that you would surround them, that you would be near to the brokenhearted, to the crushed in spirit, that you would allow us to hear your voice, that we would accept you as Lord that we would fall in line, that we would allow you to prune us, that you would allow us into your pen. We love you, God. I pray that you would continue to show up in mighty, mighty ways, despite what we have planned. I pray that it would be obvious, and regardless of if we see it as a good or bad thing, that we would praise you anyways. We love you so much, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. I am a sheep and the Lord is my shepherd, watching over my soul. My soul to keep guarding over me ever, watching wherever I go. shelter and when I'm lost and alone he rescues me and when the lion comes he is my victory constantly watching over me he is constantly watching over me We are his children, and he is our Father, watching over our soul. Great is his love for his sons and his daughters, watching wherever we go. And when the winds blow, my shelter, and when I'm lost and alone, he rescues me, and when the lion comes, he is my victory, constantly watching over me, he is constantly watching over me.